adventure, sports, outdoors. With host, Harry Canterbury. There I was, back in the wild again. And I fell right at home, where I belong. I had that feeling coming over me again. Just like it happened so many times before. Yeah. Hi, Harry Canterbury with another edition of Adventure Sports Outdoors. Join us today for an interesting program. I'm a duck hunter and I started out very, very young. I was about three years old when I was introduced to this wonderful sport. My grandpa, Harry Canterbury, who lived in Peoria, was an avid duck hunter and took me when I was a little boy down to the duck club and I got to see all the things that uh, were there and I had no idea what they were at the time, but I found out a little later. Uh, duck hunting has been a passion of mine since I was a young man. So we're going to show you a little bit about my life and how I became a duck hunter and how I still enjoy it today. Also, we're going to go down and see Mr. Fish, the guy with the big smile, Pat Sullivan, down at Kelleher's Bar and Grill on Water Street in Peoria. He is a fabulous cook. He uh, knows how to cook some fish. And in fact, the videographer that's filming this right now said it was the best fish that he ever ate in his life. So join us today for a great show. Adventure Sports Outdoors, brought to you in part by Corsaw Lumber, manufacturers of quality hardwood products, buyers of standing timber in Smithfield, Central Pool Supply, everything from pools to pool tables, and much more in Peoria on West Pioneer Parkway. Michael O'Brien Commercial Real Estate and Recreational Ground, Remax Unlimited Commercial. Kelleher's Irish Pub and Eatery, located on Peoria's Riverfront, open 11 a.m. daily. And by Alwyn and Sons Meat Company, our thanks to all of these sponsors. You know, it's great to reminisce and look at old photographs. I've got quite a collection. Over the years, my family took a lot of pictures of uh, great moments in the outdoors, duck hunting. I'm a duck hunter. I'm 61 years old, but uh, when I was a little bitty guy, about uh, 58 years ago, I was introduced to uh, the game of duck hunting. Got a lot of great photos to uh, show you and uh, show you why I became the duck hunter I am today. Take a look at this first photo. It all started on June 26, 1953. I came into the world and I had no idea what I was about to experience. Dogs in the Canterbury family uh, have always been there. I have dogs now and I had dogs when I was two years old. Here's a picture of my dad and his American Water Spaniel pal. I was about uh, three years old on Winter Street in Pekin, Illinois. And uh, I really didn't appreciate that old dog, but my dad said it was one of the best retrievers he ever had. My grandpa Canterbury, Harry W. Canterbury, is where it all started. And uh, here I am held in his arms in the basement on Hansler Street in Peoria. And as you notice in the background, the guns. So I've been around guns ever since I was a little kid. And Grandpa Canterbury is probably the biggest reason why I do what I do. It wouldn't be fair unless I mentioned my mother, uh, Betty Canterbury, uh, before it was Betty Lou Hilst from Manitou, Illinois. She came from a farm. She grew up around hunting and fishing and her dad was a big pheasant hunter. And uh, mom's been gone for a few years now, but uh, I had a wonderful family and a great, great mother. She was fabulous, just a wonderful person. Here's a picture of Vert Hovey from Easton, Illinois. We're in a Glastron boat in 1955. I was about three years old. And this was my first experience in a boat. And uh, ever since then, I've always loved boating. It's uh, one of my passions. I can't fail to mention my uh, mom's folks, uh, Wes and Martha Hilst from Manitou, Illinois. Uh, Grandpa farmed there all his life and so did his father. His grandfather fought in the Civil War in 1863 
and was wounded. Uh, great patriotic family and uh, just wonderful people. And uh, Grandpa passed away in 1973 and Grandma in 1988. But uh, Grandpa just loved to hunt pheasants and he loved to fish too. Here's a photograph of uh, my Grandpa, Bud Canterbury, holding a sprig decoy in the basement on Hansler Street. My uh, great uncle Lee is behind him in the uh, vest and uh, his good buddy, George Hediger, uh, a guy that he hunted with all his life, is uh, sitting next to Uncle Lee. Here's a photograph of my dad when he was about uh, 18 years old at the Red Nose Gun Club on Duck Island. And if you look in the rear there, that's, uh, I believe, a 1946 Chevrolet, and uh, he's holding a lot of Canada geese. It was quite a place to shoot back then, but unfortunately, uh, things pass, and. Uh, It'll never be the same, but back then it was a great place to hunt. Every weekend in the summer, we went to uh, Spring Lake at the bottom of uh, Spring Lake on the south end to uh, pass the pike hole. Uh, there was a pump ditch that went out to the Illinois River. This was the drainage ditch for Spring Lake uh, drainage. And uh, it's where I learned to fish and really learned how to swim and enjoy the outdoors. That area down there is very dear to my heart and always will be. And here's another photograph of the uh, Red Nose Gun Club about 1955. My dad and his buddies. My grandpa was probably uh, taking the picture. This was uh, the Canterbury way, was to shoot ducks and fish and hunt. And like I said, that's why I am what I am today. Here's a photograph of my great uncle Lee Canterbury holding some geese that uh, he shot on the island. He was the goose hunter. He loved to shoot geese more than he did ducks. I'm totally the opposite, but uh, Lee, his forte was goose shooting. Here's a photograph of inside the old Red Nose uh, Gun Club cabin. My uncle Lee is on the left. In the middle is my grandpa, Harry Canterbury. George Hediger with his finger up, George Barden, the owner of the property at Duck Island, and Harry Troush, who was the first state policeman in the state of Illinois, who was a very dear friend of my grandpa's. Here's a picture of my dad, Jack Canterbury, and Lauren Sunderland on the right, my uncle. Bill Friedman, in the picture of me on the right when I was about 14 years old. Here's a photograph of King Buck's grandson. King Buck was the only dog that was ever on a duck stamp. He's the only animal besides a duck that, uh, that was on the duck stamp. We had his grandson, and his name was Pepper. What a dog, and uh, he was just fantastic. For any Courtney, our pusher, and a pusher is a guy who uh, picks the ducks, uh, helps you call them in, does all the blind building and what have you. Franny had been with the club since 1935, and uh, that's me when I was about 14 years old. It's cold and we're firing up the old wood burner in the cabin so we can get warm. Here's a photograph of a place of happiness. This little shack was about uh, 10 foot by 14 foot, and the fun that was had in that little bitty cabin can never be replaced. Here's a picture of a bunch of guys down at the Duck Club. My dad, Grandpa, Harry Troush, George Barton, and Uncle Lee. Here's a photograph in early fall, getting ready to build duck blinds at the old Red Nose Gun Club. Uncle Lee and George Barton. That's George Barton on the left. Here's a picture of Dr. Rutherford on the right, and on the left is Paul Merton, who fought in the First World War in the German Army. He was kind of our cook and uh, caretaker there, a great guy, an interesting fellow to tell about the stories that he 
and things that he saw during World War I. Here's Frenny, our pusher, either getting a Pepsi or a beer. I'll bet it was a beer. Pepper. Paul Merton, John Courtney, and Fred Ellis. Here's a photograph in the summertime down at the Red Nose Gun Club. We always had a party down there. These are the folks that always used to come. Here's a photograph of a bunch of ducks that were shot in three days at the Red Nose Gun Club back in 1966. Here's my dad, Fred Ellis, myself, and Clay DeMasters. Here's a photograph sitting around eating. Eating was about as much important as shooting ducks. And the guy getting ready to stand had just been bitten by a bee on the neck and had to go to the hospital. He found out that he was allergic to bees. Had he been five minutes late, he would have passed away. Here's a photograph in the basement of Fred Ellis's home, a place where we went and picked ducks after the shoots on Sunday. Playing cards, pinochle was a big deal down at the old Red Nose. Here's Bill Friedman, my Uncle Lee, and Paul Merton, the guy that fought in World War I in the German Army. Son Scott on the left, me in the center, and Dave Evans, a good friend and a fellow member of the Red Nose Gun Club. Here's a photograph in 1980. As you see, we all have our hands up. We never fired a shot. Here's a photograph of Walt Davis and me back about 1995. This is one of the last days at the old Red Nose. About 1999, Bill Peake, Scott Canterbury, Chuck Gabbard, Chuck Gallitz, and Dale Lawson. The last duck shot at the Red Nose Gun Club was Dave Evans holding the duck. There I am holding the last duck shot on the island. Here's Chuck Gallitz, my dog Pepper, and me last year of the hunting club. Here's a picture of my old friend who passed away a few years ago, Bill Peake and me, at the uh, Woodyard Hunting Club right next door. And outside of duck hunting, these are the uh, other two loves of my life. Here's my current dog, Teddy Bear, when he was a baby. And uh, he never was little, he always was a big boy. He's 110 now, but when he was 10 weeks old, he sure was cute. And the other love of my life is my wife of 30 years, Kathy. And she puts up with my duck hunting and is a great wife. And between the dog and the wife, what else is there? Hi, I'm Dave Barth with your Sportsman's Tip of the Week. Concealed carry has finally passed, so now's the time to decide if you want a semi-automatic or revolver. And uh, here's some examples of some uh, semi-automatics. Here's a Kimber 1911 Ultra Carry. If you want something a little smaller, we have a Ruger LC9. Jump up to the car 9 millimeter here, a little smaller. A car 380 and a Taurus 380. Here's a Smith & Wesson. It's a model 637, it has a concealed hammer, it's a performance center gun, it has a nice action. Right below that we have a 642 with a concealed hammer. And then in the Taurus line, a uh, 38 Special with a concealed hammer. Right below that is a 22 Ultra Lightweight. And for the lady in your life, we have a uh, Smith & Wesson 637 stainless steel with uh, pink grips. To go along with concealed carry, you need some type of a holster. Here is a uh, fanny pack. It comes with the waist strap. We have a standard belt holster in Cordura nylon, a pancake holster in leather. Inside the pant holsters are a nice choice. It conceals the pistol pretty well. They make shoulder holsters and ankle holsters. Any of those holsters would be a fine choice depending on how you'd like to carry your pistol. I'm Dave Barth with your Sportsman's Tip of the Week. There's not too many people who know how to cook like Mr. Fish. Pat Sullivan at Kelleher's Irish Bar and Restaurant in downtown Peoria 
Pat is a wonderful fish cooker. In fact, my uh, videographer, he says that's the best fish that he ever ate. He doesn't cook it the old fashioned way, although he can, but uh, he likes to grill it with uh, butter, garlic, and his special seasonings. I think you'll find these recipes coming up to your liking. Well, you know, you got to see how my life started in uh, June 26th of 1953, duck hunting all my life, and uh, it's a passion of mine that I really enjoy. My grandfather and father introduced me to the great outdoors, and it continues on today. I'm here with Mr. Fish, and called Mr. Fish for a good reason. We're at his home, and an interesting thing about being here at Pat Sullivan's uh, home is where he keeps his secret recipe. Tell us about that thing back there. Well, we're in an old building. There used to be a hotel, a uh, distillery, uh, farm equipment. And, and after the Depression, a lot of the businesses uh, put in their own safes. They didn't trust the bank. So we have a, a, a safe in our kitchen, and we use it as our pantry. Well, what's up? Uh, I mean, this thing here is huge. Yeah. Concrete floor, still, still concrete works. Walls. Yeah, still works. Same shelves that were in there. Yeah. We left them in, we sealed them, and, and of course it's our pantry, and I, I clutter it up with a lot of different yeah. ingredients, but I got my secret, secret ingredient. Yeah, in I'll there. get that out. Okay. Well, today we're going to find out what uh, his secret recipe is all about. We're going to cook some fish, and uh, we've got two recipes, but uh, which one are we going to do today? Today we're going to grill some bass. I had a good friend of mine uh, catch some uh, grouper down in Florida, and he wanted a recipe, and so I worked with it. I, he gave me some for a cookout, and so I worked with it for about a week, and I, I liked it so well that we're going to do a very simple recipe, a grilling on the grill fish, and it's got three easy ingredients. Okay. Well, I'm going to let Mr. Fish, he is the Mr. Fish for sure. <laughs> How many fish did you catch last week? Uh, we caught a lot. A lot, yeah. You <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh... Yeah, and, and, and uh, we do fish a lot. Uh, we love fishing. It, it's a nice relaxing. I've taken my grandkids out uh, camping and fishing. Right. They love it. My, my kids love it. So uh, we do a lot of fishing. It's, it's fun. And, and plus, I love creating different recipes. I know with you it. do. I and, know and, you and, do. and it's just as much fun as fishing. So. All right. Well, I'm going to let Mr. Fish get with it and uh, show you what comes up next. We're going to grill this bass we just caught. Now, if you don't go fishing and don't have bass, you can go over to Dixon's. they got a great selection of uh, fresh fish. And uh, they do have uh, white fish, uh, uh, a, a tremendous amount of uh, selection. And you can use grouper, uh, bass, uh, walleye, any, any kind of a white fish. It, it, this will work. This recipe, uh, just, just uh, I, I played with it a little bit, uh, got it out of an old uh, uh, recipe book, an old fish recipe book. So what I do is take my, my fresh fish, I'll put it in um, some olive oil. We'll get some, cooks love to use olive oil, so we'll, we'll get that going. And that'll lock in some of the, uh, keep it from getting dry. We'll rub it in that olive oil. We'll get, we'll get about three or a uh, handful of pieces going because uh, None of us ate lunch, and it's going to be an early dinner, so we're a little hungry. Take some Old Bay. Old Bay seasoning is my secret recipe a lot of times. Um, it comes from the East Coast, great history on it. Look, at, look it up, and uh, it's an excellent spice for fish. Just get a little bit of Old Bay on each side, and we'll get them on both sides, of course. Then, then what I do, I take some um, um, uh, sea salt. We'll, get, we'll hit them with some sea salt. We'll grind it up a little bit. And we'll take some ground pepper. We'll do both sides of that. Now what I put on this, it just brings out a, a, a nice flavor is some um, um, garlic powder. Just a little bit of garlic powder, just to spice it up a little bit. We'll flip them over, do the same on the other side. So, we'll take these out, and I'll finish these up. We'll take them out to the grill. Won't take much to cook them on the grill. Five minutes on each side. So it's very easy to do, quick for a dinner, and it's delicious. 
All right, that should do us. All right, before we go out and cook our fish on the grill, my good friend Dan Kelch dropped off some fresh sweet corn. His son Chad uh, grows it. I'm gonna show you a simple recipe on it. Put them right in the microwave with the husk, two minutes an ear. We'll do it all together, so it'll take about six or eight minutes. And I'll show you a way to, uh, to clean the tassel and the, uh, everything off, very clean. Simple way to do this. And we got a little ingredient to really juice this corn up. So uh, we'll, we'll start out, we'll get these in the microwave. It'll take six to eight minutes. We'll get the fish on the grill. They take 10 minutes. By then, the whole lunch or dinner's ready and we'll be ready to eat. Okay, we'll take these over, tusk and all. We'll get those going. Okay, they're ready to go. Let's take our fish out to the grill now and we'll start cooking it up. We'll have about six pieces here for two pieces a piece per, per person. So we'll have a nice, nice late lunch or early, early dinner. All right, we're out, we're out on the patio, three stories up. So we'll span the river and, and the upper area here, but we're out in my, my grill. Doesn't take much for me. I got a little electric grill here. We've got it right at 350. That's what you want to cook this fish at. The grill has been seasoned. We're going to spray a little non-stick on it. And on goes the fish. There we go, we close the lid. We'll cook those for five minutes at 350. Then we'll flip them. So I'm gonna set my timer, five minutes. Harry, do you wanna run in and hit the start button on the microwave? Cause in six minutes, those corn will be done. We got fresh corn. Okay, it's about five minutes time to flip these. Oh yeah, they're looking good. You know, being up on this deck is like being on a uh, place in New Orleans. This is uh, quite the, uh, quite yeah. I think I'm down on Bourbon Street. Yeah. We have a good time with it. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, you know, wrought iron. We're standing out here on the uh, fire escape. It's a really, uh, really a neat, uh, neat place. It really is. On fish on the grill, you only want to flip it one time. And then that way it, um, uh, it doesn't crumble on you. It doesn't we're fall getting, apart, yeah. Yeah, we're getting a nice, a nice, um, getting a nice uh, cook on one side. I got this uh, fish flipper from Dixon's over there. They're my favorite fish store. So oh, yeah. They, they do a great job, don't they? A great place to go if fishing is uh, yeah. not too good. You always get fish at Dixon's. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Give it another five minutes another five at 350. Minutes our corn will be done just be about ready? the same time. And we're ready to eat. You, know, you can notice over there you have a balcony, which is a lot like yours, and yes. uh, that's a private apartment over there, but yes. uh, that's really, really, really nice. Yeah, when we did that uh, Cortina uh, fundraiser, we had a jazz band on my balcony, a jazz band underneath. We had one up there, so when one got done, the other one started in. People were down on the street and in, in, in the walkway, got our fish pond down there, and um, uh, we, we, uh, we have a good time up here. It's become quite the icon for Peoria, is uh, the old riverfront, and I know you initiated it. And, well, yeah. And both, I, a lot of people are very proud of, of well. your accomplishments because they want this. And they, unfortunately, in Peoria, a lot of things have been knocked down. You know? Well, I'm really proud of you and, and your partner, John, that yeah. you guys have done just a fantastic job of uh, revamping these old uh, buildings and uh, saving them for future generations. I hope they use them and use them well. That's right. So, well, we're about done. You okay, want to bring I'll go the get corn the sweet corn. Yeah. I'll go get it. Uh, it should be good. Bring it out, and I'll show uh, you how to cut it up, right. uh, strip it off. and To cook fish on a grill, it's really nice to have a spatula wide enough, but thin. You need a real thin spatula because it is a, a very tender now being cooked. That will taste good. Mm 
All right. Sweet corn right there. Right out of the microwave. Now we could have cooked this on the grill. Yeah. And I've done it many a times with the husk on, with the husk off. It, sometimes it gets away from you while you're trying to do other things and it burns. Or this Should have went down and got some tomatoes out of your garden. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I almost did. <laughs> I have some very good tomatoes. And uh, so the sweet corn was cooked in the, in the microwave about two minutes each. And, and here's how we um, strip it out. What I do is cut off about a half, half inch of the bottom half of the piece. Grab a hold of it right here. Peaches and cream. Peaches and cream. Doing it this way, very little tassel on there. That's right. Don't mind the fingers, I wash my hands, boys. I, I did pair this, this uh, dinner with a white wine. A Napa Valley Sterling Sauvignon Blanc. We're gonna have a little white wine with this dinner with uh, the fish, and I think we'll have a great lunch. One thing about eating with me, everybody eats. Cameraman, everybody. Whoa, no, wait a minute, Harry. No, this no, is no, for no. decoration. <laughs> That's <now>. decoration. Don't <laughs> let my wife see this. Yeah, yeah. Here, I'll get our napkins. That's for Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll get our. our here's our napkins, guys. <laughs> There's another rule in my house. Go ahead and roll the corn in the butter. That's right. That's what <laughs> to do it. Right? Roll this. Now, another thing I do with my sweet corn, I take the sea salt. The sea salt happens to bring the kernels up. I mean, it, it's really, really good. Mmm, that is good lid, that. that is delicious. Adventure Sports Outdoors, brought to you in part by Corsaw Lumber, manufacturers of quality hardwood products, buyers of standing timber in Smithfield, Central Pool Supply, everything from pools to pool tables, and much more in Peoria on West Pioneer Parkway. Michael O'Brien Commercial Real Estate and Recreational Ground, Remax Unlimited Commercial. Kelleher's Irish Pub and Eatery, located on Peoria's Riverfront, open 11 a.m. daily. And by Allwood and Sons Meat Company. Our thanks to all of these sponsors. Mr. Fish is really a great cook. You won't find any better cooked fish than are cooked by Pat Sullivan. We hope you have a great hunting season. Duck season's just around the corner. Dove season opens up September the 1st, and uh, teal season shortly thereafter. Uh, duck stamps have gone from $15 to $25. That's a controversial charge. I hope they spend the money in the right places. I'm all in favor of, the, of an increase as long as they spend the money where they should. Have a safe and happy hunting season. We'll see you next month.